Hey everybody, Chris here from Chris and G Travels. Today we are going to be talking about why I actually regret getting this Class A motorhome. So to start out this video, I want to say that I am very thankful that we got this RV. It's not that, you know, I'm in a situation where I'm so sad that we're traveling around in this RV or we have it now. This is more of a video in context of if I could go back, sit down with myself, like if I was telling myself three or four years ago when we were thinking about getting this RV up till the day that I actually signed to purchase this RV, this video is in that context. So it's essentially me sitting down, if, if I could, talking to myself back in the day. And the reason why I think this video would be helpful is because I know there's a lot of people in that situation right now, a lot of people watching these videos, a lot of people watching these vlogs where they're you know, on the fence, they're thinking about doing it. So hopefully this video will be very helpful for you. So if there was one big thing that I wish I would have known or done more research about or somebody would have told me about, or I should have listened to people, because I remember actually people mentioning this earlier, but the thing that really got me was the depreciation. I had no idea how much this RV would depreciate over time. As one of our friends mentioned, an RV is never an investment. I mean, maybe not never. You might have a time or two where it is an investment. But overall, typically, an RV is not an investment. He said it's a chain pull investment where essentially you just pull the chain and then your money goes straight down the toilet. Throughout the three years that we've had this RV, it's depreciated about $10,000. And that, that's even including all the upgrades that we did. You know, So for example, typically with a home, if you put solar on a home, it's gonna increase the value of that home typically. Where with an RV, year after year, mile after mile, the value of the rig just keeps going down and down. Especially if you buy a brand new RV, you know, right when you drive that thing off the lot, it loses five to $6,000. But even if you buy from a private seller, as you use it, as the years go along, typically the value goes down. Unless, you know, you could flip RVs, unless you find an amazing deal, you can get them in an auto auction or something, then yeah, of course, you can mitigate that risk. It's just like, for example, getting into real estate. You could be able to find this great deal, this foreclosure that's an awesome house, has no issues, but typically it's completely different because again, a house, the value retains in that house where with an RV, it just depreciates no matter what. So I wish I would have really understood what depreciation was in RVs and how rapidly it happens. I mean, $10,000 in three years is not a good investment. And you know, for, for us, especially up in Alaska, uh, being that rent is so much in Seward, the place we go to each summer, you know, that, that depreciation kind of evens out and you know, that that's our own situation, but just be very cognizant of the depreciation. This is fairly closely related to the depreciation aspect, but this is the financing aspect. So we ended up finan financing this RV. I saw the low monthly payments, what I thought was a low monthly payment of, you know, around three to four hundred dollars. What I didn't understand was at the time is how much of that will go with four hundred dollars just to make it easy. How much of that four hundred dollars was actually going to the bank for interest and how much was actually being paid down on the interest. So if I only did four hundred dollars, for example, for the entirety of the loan, I think it's a 15, 20 year loan, the RV would actually end up costing $70,000. So to, to put it you know, in practical terms, not only is the RV depreciating over time, you're also paying more when you finance it. So when you get one of these newer rigs, like for us, when we financed it, not only has it lost $10,000 in three to four years, it's also gonna be costing more because it's financed. So knowing how that process works, I probably would have got an older class A because my assumption and you know, this is kind of leading up to the next point is if you get a newer RV, you're going to have less problems. And that is completely not true. Talk to anybody that's bought a brand new RV and they drive it off the lot. And essentially every RV that I've heard of, unless somebody gets incredibly lucky, it has its factory fix time which means that it has to go back to the factory, get all this work done because they're just pumping them out. The RV cells are so hot right now. They're literally just getting those things out of the factory as quickly as possible and dealing with the costs and the troubles later on because they know they, they're still gonna be making money. And what they're doing is passing those problems on to the consumer. Even if you buy it brand new, 
you're going to have even more problems. It's, you know, a lot of people say it's better to buy a rig that's one or two years old that somebody's been traveling a lot in because they've taken care of all those problems. They've gone through the headaches. I really think there's, there's two main reasons why you encounter problems with an RV. Number one, you're essentially subjecting a home to an earthquake every time you drive. So on the roads we go on through the Alcan, through backcountry doing boondocking. I mean, just the bouncing is incredibly hard on these rigs and that compiles with the problem because these rigs aren't built that well. I mean, you know, this this is not very solidly built. I mean, this is a Monaco when I was doing my research. You know, they're, they're, they're known for being built fairly well, but still it's not built with the highest quality gear and it's made to sway back and forth. When we first got this rig, I remember hearing all the cabinets like kind of rocking back and forth. And I thought the whole back was gonna cave in and people were commenting on videos saying, no, that's fine. That's just how it works, you know, with, with the Class A motorhome. It's made to kind of sway with the row and absorb the abuse. And you just have to get comfortable with that. You just have to realize that they're not built, you know, all that great. So that's just part of being on the road with these. Those two things together pretty much guarantee that things are going to be happening with your rig. And you're going to, you're going to have to be comfortable uh, wrenching on your own vehicle. I have a whole bay dedicated to tools. And I've mentioned before, you know, working on these rigs give you immense self-confidence to try and get problems solved and you know actually get things done but that's something that i didn't realize as well that you are going to have to be working on your rig unless you have a lot of extra money sitting around the next aspect it's not so much research there's no way i could have researched this really it's something that you have to learn by living in the rv and that is i wouldn't have got this rv if i would have known that we were going to be doing so much boondocking it was in the back of my mind. I knew that we would be doing some boondocking, but I didn't realize, for example, on our last trip from Texas up to Alaska, we only stayed in two RV parks, and both of those times is because we couldn't find any boondocking spots anywhere close to the town we wanted to explore. So now, knowing how much we love boondocking and how awesome it is to be out in the country and camp for free and be able to go out and explore and hike and run in those areas, I definitely probably would have suggested to myself just our own situation probably getting a fifth wheel with giant holding tanks probably go with a composting toilet and delete the gray tanks but that's just our own situation and again it's nothing that you can watch really like you can watch all the videos you want you can have this idea that boondocking might be perfect for you but until you actually get in the rv and live full time and get a real true understanding of what your actual needs and desires are you're, you're just not gonna know. And the very last reason why I regret getting this RV is the cooking space for this RV. I didn't realize that we'd be doing as much cooking as we do. I knew we'd be doing some, but just having the option to have an actual oven and also having a spot to prepare food. You know, some of the fifth wheels have that little island where you could prepare your food and then cook on one side. That would be awesome because we go out to eat, you know, maybe 10 to 15 times a year rest of the time we're right here in the RV cooking our food so I do wish we would have got an RV with a uh, bigger cooking space so those are a few reasons why I kind of regret getting this class A again it's all gonna be up to your own personal preference just because my experience was like this doesn't mean that financing might be better for you or staying in RV parks might be your thing but for for us just for example again we didn't realize that we would not like being cramped into RV parks like that. It just kind of feels like you're packed in there like sardines. You don't have that much space. There's, I don't know, we, we just like going out, boondocking, getting all our gear ready, and just being out in nature rather than being in RV parks. And there is no videos, there's nothing we could have done beforehand until we started living this life to truly understand that. But again, it's a huge blessing to be in the situation with this Class A. This Class A has opened up so many doors to us and you know the last three years have been you know the most amazing three years of my life and it's because we got an rv and went out there and started doing this it's just now that we're living in the in the rv we just have different priorities so hopefully this this helps a little bit something to look out for as you're planning to get an rv just keep these things in mind you know especially the, the financing part do your research on that and then also as you're getting a rig if you're thinking about even the remote possibility that you might be boondocking a lot definitely look into getting larger holding tanks maybe a rig that already has solar installed a rig that you know has the option to add a lot of batteries for your battery bank so this is very subjective very conditional upon us but if i could do it all over again 
for what we've been doing, I would probably get an older fifth wheel. Um, I saw one that was a CEA model. I'll see if I can uh, find it again and link it in the description down below. But it's an older fifth wheel. Uh, its carrying capacity for how much weight it could actually carry was fairly high, and that would be for the battery bank, maybe auxiliary water tanks. Uh, the kitchen had an island and it had an oven as well, so that would have been perfect. And then if we could do it all over again, uh, probably do the fifth wheel because then we would have a truck that we could go out and explore in. Because when, when I first got this, I just assumed that we wouldn't have a tow car. And then later on, once I realized how limiting it was to, you know, we realized we wanted to go out in the country and boondock, but at the same time, if we didn't have a car, we couldn't get into town. And this RV is just a little bit too long to try and park into town. So we found ourselves in the situation where we pretty much had to get a tow car if we wanted to go explore cities or towns where we were at. So with the fifth wheel, we would have had the truck for that. And then we would have had a better living situation with the fifth wheel. Uh, and, you know, we wouldn't have known until we actually got out here and started living life on the road. So hopefully this video helps. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I will catch you all later.